Here we go. We're going to kind of dive in. At this point, you, you, you get it. Zero unit, lesson three, part C. We got this. We're going to do it. And we're going to solve quadratics by completing the square. We are going to do a single example to try to dust off some cobwebs and all of those things. So let's do it. Example number one and only. We're going to solve x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0 by completing the square. V, whoa, that's the or something. What happened to that word? There it goes. The square. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the thing down below. X squared. Step one, let's go ahead and do step one because I think we can fit that down in here, is... Unlike factoring, instead of wanting everything on one side and zero on the other side, we actually want this C term, the constant term, over on the other side. So we're going to subtract one from both sides. Oh, let's get a jump on that. And when we rewrite it as x squared minus 4x equals negative one, you notice that I left a space here. It's because we are going to complete the square right here. So to figure out what we're going to stick on, oh, I left off, I did leave off an x. That should be there, right? In order to complete this in order to complete the square, we need to figure out what goes here. So what we're going to use is we're going to do b, so that would be the number in front of x, whoops, divided by 2 squared. Right? So that's what we're going to stick on there. So in this case, B is negative 4, so we're going to do negative 4 divided by 2 squared. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, and then squared would give us, excuse me, 4. And I did go ahead and write that intermediate step. Sure, I could have done this in my head, this whole little thing in my head, or on the calculator, or whatever. I did write this intermediate step because we're actually going to need this number in a minute. And so it's going to be easier to be able to point out what's going on. So what we need to do now is we need to, it's always going to be positive. It's always going to be plus here. <coughs> Excuse me. So we need to, we need to add 4 to this, this guy right here. And if we add 4 to this side of the equation, what do we got to do? We got to add 4 to this side of the equation as well. I keep getting punches of emails this afternoon. Slightly bizarre. Don't know what's going on. So on this left side, now we can factor it. Now what's really cool about this is, is it is always, always, always is going to be x and then plus or minus this number, so x minus 2 in this case, always going to be that b divided by 2 squared. And you can see that if you take the steps like we did in our last video, if you take the steps to actually step, actually walk through and factor this, this the what multiplies get the first, what multiplies get the last, and then signs and all that stuff, It'll be x minus 2 times x minus 2, which is x minus 2 squared. And it will always, you don't even have to worry about doing that whole factoring thing on this particular one because it always factors into that for the completing the square. Okay, so this turns into that and then equals negative 1 plus 4 is 3, right? So now what we can do is, and this is important uh, because... This whole side is squared. So what's the opposite of squaring? The opposite of squaring is unsquaring, or squ which is the same as to say square rooting here in the U.S., right? That's how we call it, square root. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. Now, this is what's important. And if you're going to make a mistake on this, this next thing is where it's going to be. When you take the square root of both sides of an equation, then you end up with plus or minus. So this turns into x minus 2 
plus, uh, equals plus or minus the square root of 3, right? Then to get rid of this 2, we would add it to both sides, right? So plus 2, plus 2. That one cancels, leaving us with just an x, right? So x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. Now, very often in a math class, we want the exact answer. So we'd circle that and move on with our life. Now, of course, if we wanted to, if we wanted to get the decimal equivalent of this, then we would have to plug this into our calculator and, and do that or look it up on a square root chart or something if you're, if you're really, really old school, right? So you'd do 2 plus the square root of 3, and you would end up with approximately equal to 3.73 as one of the two answers. And you remember that quadratics give us two answers, right? Pretty either, Well, two, one, or zero. But for this video, we're not worried about those other two cases. And we, if we do two minus the square root of three, we end up with approximately 0 0.27. So that's completely pl completing the square. Hopefully that dusted off some of those mental cobwebs that are stuck up there in the head here in pre-calculus. We will have one more part for this lesson. Part D is going to be solving quadratics with the quadratic formula. So I will see you there. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Adios. Bye-bye.